the night. I guess it's night for me. Whatever time it is for you. Um, I want to guide you through setting up and understanding the key listener program. It's really cool because it will allow you to use import from a keyboard um, without doing all of the bulletproofing and string methods that we used in Moving Icon. And it's using a, an object called key listener. So first things first, come over here to Haiku and download this key listener code. Should look something like this. All right. And I'm going to come here to Eclipse. I'm going to make a new Java project. You can call this Program 17 Key Listener Demo. Don't create a module. And then in the source folder right there you can drop in a key listener demo mine has a little one on it because i've downloaded it already so i will have to delete that one but you will not have to come on so let's copy the file and open it up there we go. So I'm quickly just going to change the name. You don't have to do this. But if you ever need to rename, go to refactor, rename. And I'm going to ditch that one. There we go. All right, welcome to Key Listener. So right now, I want to play this program for you and show you what it does. So if I start it right now, it's going to create a graphics window with a little blue ball in it. And yes, that's using the ball class, which you're all familiar with now. But I'm going to start touching my up, down, left, and right keys. And note that I'm not in Eclipse right now. I'm not in the console. I am on the window. Here I'm going to touch my right key. Look at that. All right, I let go. There it is. I'm going to hold down, down. I'm just going to hit up once. Once, 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 once. Look at this. That's awesome, right? I can move this ball around using up, down, left, and right. And that's what this code can do. I want to show you how it does it. So in the same way that many balls with timer implemented JFrame, or extended with JFrame and implemented action listener. And I want to remind you that when we said we're implementing action listener, we were making a promise. And we promised that we would have these two methods, action performed, or that we had the action performed method. There was a um, there was a promise there that we would have that, um, and that's what allowed us to use our timer. The same is true for key listener. Here, when we say it implements key listener, we are promising that key pressed, key typed, and key released methods will be in this code. And so if you scroll down with me, past our finals, past our class scope ball, past our main method, you'll see that we have this method, key pressed, key typed, and key released. Now you see that key released and key typed have nothing inside of them because we don't do anything in our code right now for releasing the key or typing the key. But we do have code inside of key pressed. That's because, let's run this again, we want something to happen every time we press certain keys. Every time I press right, the ball moves right. Every time I press down, the ball moves down. And that happens right here. This key event E, you can think of it like a window in graphics, you know how we say like g dot um, draw rect. Here we say e dot get key code. So anytime a key is pressed, anytime a key is pressed, our program enters this method, and the key, um, and in this key event e, 
a key code is stored. So for each key on your keyboard, there's a key code. So this code VK underscore left corresponds with touching the key on the left, the left arrow. This code VK right corresponds with the right arrow, VK up for the up arrow and VK down for the down arrow. So anytime I press the right key, as I'm doing right here, it triggers a key event. And so I enter this key pressed method and here I get the key code and I check to see is the key code left is the key code right yes it is so I am shifting the X of my ball B by step size and that's why the ball shifts to the right this method shift X is from what class the ball class exactly when we say shift x by step size, we're moving it to the right step size steps. And so to understand how this whole program works, let's come back up here to main. In main, we make a ball at start x, start y. It's not moving at all. Here's its radius and it's blue. And then we create a window. We set its size. We make it visible. And then here is the new line. This line says in the graphics window that we've already created, I'm going to add a key listener. I'm going to add a key listener that's going to modify that graphics window. And when we say this line, that is when the program will start waiting for keys or listening for keys. That is when this method becomes active, it's waiting. Note that we call repaint here. We call repaint at the end of this method because once the user has typed that right and we've shifted the ball, we want to repaint it such that it looks like the ball has moved. And then finally, here's our paint method. Every time we call repaint, we just erase the background with by setting the color to white and then filling a rectangle like the background, and then we draw the ball. So to give you an idea of how this works, I want to um, I want to uh, add another key here. So right now, I'm going to add another key command. And let's say I want to move the ball down a lot. So I'm going to say else if key code key code is equal to key event dot and then I need the code for it. It'll be vk underscore something. So let's say that key command for going down a lot is going to be d. So then I would have VKD. Now, in this case, I'm going to shift my ball down quite a lot. So I can say B dot shift Y. And if I'm going down, that means I want to add. So I'm going to add, pass a positive value, kind of like we do with the down arrow. But instead of step size, let's make it bigger. So I'll do step size times, let's say 10. All right, I'm going to quit this old version. I'll run this one. And now I'll go right, 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 down, up, right, 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 down, and now D. Woo, look at that. That's what the D key does now. Pretty cool, right? So what is your task? Your job is to modify this program by adding a few more keystroke commands. Just like we just added D to your code, I want you to add Z, S, B, and C. Z will move the ball to a random location. S stands for smaller, multiply its diameter by one half. B stands for bigger, multiply its diameter by two. And C stands for color, change the color in any way you'd like, surprise me. I want to point out that you'll have to modify the key pressed method as I just showed you. 
and you'll also have to modify the ball class. I want you to add some new methods, set new location, get bigger, get smaller, change color. This is going to make your life fairly easier in key pressed because you can just call those methods here. For example, for smaller, you could just call e dot get smaller. Do we call it get smaller? I think we did. Yeah. And then in the ball class, modify it. Now you'll notice at the bottom of this code, I've included the ball class for you. So just modify it down here. So you'd want to come in here and after our constructor, create a new method. Public void get smaller. And then you'll change things however you need to. All right. With that, I think you're ready to start this program. Good luck.